I'm sorry I got married without telling you. Jay Walter, I've got $9 million. After getting you so upset, you had to come to the doctor's office. Maybe it's $10 million. We were engaged for three years. Finally, passion got the best of us. That's close to $2 million a year in interest. I know you don't approve of Karen. I'm sorry she's not a musician. A man could live very nicely on $2 million a year. But she loves me. Even a nincompoop like you. And I love her. She likes music. She's very talented, a decorator. Well, we can't all be musicians. But you don't get any of it. I called my lawyer, we redrafted my will, cutting you out. I've told Karen how much you love music, how much music really means to you. What a wonderful musician you would have been if you had any talent. Any talent at all, you'd have been a great musician. Also, you managed my classical concert series for the last 10 years that is now a rock concert series. I'm sorry I broke it to you the way I did. What do you want me to do? I want you to leave for Manchuria. I didn't mean to give you a headache. You always give me a headache. You always gave me a headache. But this is the last headache you're going to give me. You're fired. Fired? Fired. Uncle Phil. Don't uncle me. I'm a complete stranger. You're my uncle. You're the man who was so kind to my dying father. You're the man who paid all his doctor bills and saved my mother from years of debt. Years of debt? She died the next day. Why did I bother? Your mother was a saint. But she's a dead saint. She died peacefully. She died gratefully. She left this world with gratitude to you, Uncle Phil. She should have stayed in this world. Never mind being grateful. I can never repay you. Absolutely. You don't work for me anymore. I've thought about quitting many times. Thinking has never been your strong suit anyway. But I haven't because I always realized how much I owe you. And this is the way you pay me back? By getting married? It was time. What do you mean it was time? You get married and the musicians go out on strike. I couldn't help the musicians strike. You caused the musicians strike. They struck last week. We got married yesterday. And you got fired today. I begged you to sit down and talk with the musicians. I don't talk to musicians. I hire musicians. Well, if you talk to them, maybe you can hire them again. You can't talk to them. No one can talk to them. Don't give me advice. I'm your nephew. I love you. I'm a stranger. I could care less. Shall I go back to the office and wait for you? Go back to the office and clean out your desk. I'll go home. Call me and let me know what the doctor says. Go home, call the phone company, tell them to disconnect your phone. You won't be able to pay for it anymore. Should we expect you for dinner tonight? I really want you to see what Karen's done with the place. She's got a wonderful eye, Uncle Phil. You'll never see me again, ever. Give Dr. Ordway my best. Keep your best. Anybody gets your best, it's like they lost something. I hope you feel better. Get out and let me get started. All of us need money to provide for our families and enjoy the niceties of life. But some people seem to seek money with an intensity that goes beyond all that. Why? Do they enjoy the feeling of power that money gives them? Do they use it to feel good about themselves? Like, look at me, I'm a good person, my life is a success because I'm rich, so pay attention to me, respect me, love me. Or do they pursue it so that they can share it with other people, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, sheltering the homeless, educating those who without help would go uneducated. There's no sin in being rich, and there's no sin in being poor, but there's a terribly great sin in having more than you need and not sharing with those who have less than they need. The old adage remains true. The only things you can take with you are the things you've given away.
man could die here. I guess so. It's been 35 minutes. Actually, it's been 53 minutes. Why am I waiting? Search me. I thought somebody was with the doctor. Why? Nobody's with the doctor? No. Why didn't you tell me? You didn't ask. You came in, you sat down in that chair. How long were you going to wait there? As long as you waited there. Is this not a doctor's office? This is a doctor's office. Am I not a patient? Not yet. What do I have to do to be a patient? See the doctor. When can I do that? You're next. Name. I'm an old patient here. I'm a new receptionist. Acrimonious, Felodian K. Is that your given name? Yes, I gave it to me. What name were you born with? Alphonse J. Winsprocket. I know. How do you go through life with a name like Alphonse J. Winsprocket? Felodian K. Acrimonious. What does the K stand for? Caucasian. Isn't that usually spelled with a C? I'm an unusual man. I can see that. Where's Carol? She's not here. Where is she? Actually, she's at a funeral. Whose? Dr. Ordway's. Dr. Ordway isn't in there? Not since they carried him out of there. What do I do now? Mourn. Dead? And gone. The office is empty. No, but it certainly minus him. Why wasn't I informed? There was nothing you could have done. I would have changed my appointment. To when? I mean, he died. I was having an attack. I'm still having an attack. I would have seen somebody else. Any doctor in particular? When I'm having an attack, I am not particular. Good. Why don't you take off your hat and coat and roll up your sleeve? Why? I'll take your blood pressure. You're not a doctor. Give me a shot. Oh, you're a doctor in receptionist clothing. You want to take over his practice? What's your name? Dominicus. Gideon O. Gideon O. Dominicus? Philodian K. Acrimonius? How come you're taking my blood pressure? Something to pass the time. I didn't tell you my symptoms. Headache, shortness of breath, ringing in the ears, dizziness, pain in the chest, numbness in the right arm. Hey, that's pretty good. You had a lot of sense of good. No, no, I mean, uh, you knew. How come you knew? I guess. My nephew put me here. I gathered you were upset with him. Oh? You listened? I listened. You haven't listened to my heart. <laughs> Have you got a heart? Listen to my heart. I've heard your heart. I demand that you listen to my heart. Okay. Uh-huh. 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 What's it doing, a monologue? You asked me to listen to your heart. Your heart is speaking plainly. And what is it saying? Goodbye. Telling me I'm going to die? Everybody dies. But soon? Soon is relative. I'm a man of precision. How soon? Well, you're looking at your watch? Get the hospital. Call an ambulance. Panic is no good. It's bad for your health. My health isn't so good already. A little panic won't matter. What am I going to do? I think you've done just about everything you're going to do. Listen. I've got ten million dollars. Help me. You can have eight. All right, nine. What kind of a doctor are you anyway? Dr. 
doctors don't just stand around and, and let people fall at their feet. They, they give them injections. They... Nine million dollars. You could buy yourself a good practice. Look at this office. That waiting room. What's wrong with the waiting room? It's not a fun place. A fun place? It's the only room in the world if you painted it black and it cheer it up. Anybody who waits in that waiting room hasn't got the strength to leave. Ah, Ordway always handled sick people. Well, he was a doctor. He was a quack. Everybody knew it. You should see his patients. Of course, most of them you had to dig up. If you knew he was a quack, why'd you go to him? Because I knew that whatever he said, if I did just the opposite, I'd be terrific. If you liked wrong answers, Ordway wouldn't let you down. Listen, you don't even have to have a practice. You could retire. How about another half a million? Nine million five hundred thousand dollars. Maybe you could cure me. You wouldn't want to leave me penniless, would you? You look like a nice man, even if you have a funny name. Nine million five hundred thousand dollars? You could change your name. You could even have my name. Acrimonious. I'm tired of it anyway. All right. You drive a hard bargain. Take it all. Take the whole ten million dollars. That's every penny I have. But for heaven's sake, do something. There's nothing to be done. I'm talking money here. I thought you were talking about your life. A very important life. Every life is important. Some lives aren't worth a nickel. Who's to judge? Bankers. Not wives, children, friends? Easily swayed by emotion. I see. So a banker determines a person's worth. Absolutely. There's a phone. Call your banker. You've got $10 million. Put it up as collateral. Maybe he'll lend you your life. I don't feel like I'm going to die. Would you rather feel like it? No. Be grateful. It's all over, huh? Just about. Where did I bother? With what? Living. I've got $10 million. If that's all you got out of it, maybe. What else is there? You have a nephew. He seems like a nice fella. That's what I bought it for? That nephew? He loves you. He loves my money. You don't believe that? I know that. I see. Well, how about friends? Friends? <sighs> Rich man doesn't have friends. Only supplicants, petitioners, beggars, touters, deal makers, moochers, all imploring, pleading, beseeching for one year of your life, a month, an hour, moment. Drones, leeches, funguses. Fungi. Whatever. Friends. You want to be my friend? You'll be the first. I'd be honored to be your friend. Terrific. We'll have a friendship. Short but sweet. Since you can't do anything for me and uh, I've got nothing to do, we'll spend the evening together. Love to, but I can't. You can't? Not the whole evening. Well, I'll only be here for part of it anyway, according to you. What's so important? I'm going to a concert. You're going to a concert? I'm dying and you're going to a concert? It'll be a good concert. <laughs> there isn't going to be a concert. The musicians are out on strike. Forget the concert. I guarantee you there'll be a concert. All the halls are closed, tight as a drum. Mm, not this hall. What's that? This is a picture of the last concert. Where is this? I know all the auditoriums. It's been there for ages and ages and ages and ages. What's that? What? That big seat down in front of the others. That's the seat the Lord of Hosts sits in. The Lord of Hosts? God? God. And they got a special seat for God? Yes. And of course, he sits in it. He conducts. You are crazy. I changed my mind. Don't be my friend. And what's that chorus? That's the host. He's in the Lord of Hosts. He's the Lord, they're the hosts. There must be hundreds of them. They must make quite a sound. You've never heard anything like it. I'll bet. They look sold out. Yeah, they do all right. But you got a seat. Yes. Good location? Can't get any better. Down front? Right there. Uh-huh. 
you're not God. Who says so? Gideon O. Dominicus is not. Gideon O. Dominicus. G O. This is a joke. No, it's an acronym. I don't believe you. Yes, you do. This is no fool. I wouldn't kid a friend. I am going to die. That's what I've been telling you. That's why you didn't call the ambulance. What was the use? That's why I don't feel like I'm going to die. I try to be merciful. In fact, I'm probably dead already. Why do you feel dead? I never died. About this uh, concert, it's not here. It's there? It's there. Well, I'd like to go to that concert. I'm sorry. Hey, I'll buy a ticket. I got $10 million, I ought to be able to buy one ticket. You can't buy a ticket to this concert. You have to be invited. Uh-huh. Who sends out the invitations? Hmm. I love music. That's about the only thing you do love. When I was a boy, I studied an instrument, cello, but we didn't have any money. My father couldn't hold down a job. We were always on relief. I begged. I said I would go out and earn the money. But he said, no. Every penny I earned, we needed. Music, we didn't need. Eating, we needed. My sister, Jay Walter's mother, she begged on my behalf, but he was adamant. I swore I would never be poor. Money was so important. Okay, I would have money. Ten million dollars. I never forgot my sister. I, I try to pay her back. You're punishing me. Death is not a punishment. What is it? It's an inevitability. You won't spend the evening with me. A man is dying, and God won't spend the evening with him? OK. OK. I don't go to the concert. Where do I go? We have a room for you. A room? You got a room for me? Maybe you could give me a radio. I could hear the concert on the radio. Yeah, I have radios up there. I brought music to the world. You brought concerts to the world. The world is full of music you never brought because you never heard it. I want to go to that concert. Please? Philodian K. Acrimonious. Music is a joyful thing. But there was no joy in your life. No real music. So I'm afraid there can be no music afterwards. I am sorry. You have a little time left. Where would you like to spend it? I'm open for suggestion. It's too bad you turned down your nephew's invitation. That's no loss. He won't feel that way. Ugh. Devious idiot. All he ever wanted was I should die so he could get my business. Well, I gave him the business. He gets nothing. Nothing. He's worked for you for 10 years. Worthless. A bungler. When the concert series was going under, he changed the whole thing around for you. You mean The Rock? Would you believe Philodian K. Acrimonious books rock concerts? Your nephew made you a fortune. You said the bankers judge the worth of a person's life. Well, in your eyes, your life is a big success. And you owe it to him. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. And I tell him what to do, he does it. 
people like him. Ah, oh, well, I suppose that's a good reason to keep him around for 10 years. I kept him around because he was my sister's boy. He played an excellent French horn. Your sister wanted him to have a career. It wasn't so excellent. Had a nice tone. He gave away years of practice to manage that concert series of yours. He wasn't all that hot. He would have had a very successful career, but he was grateful to you for helping his family. He thought you needed him, and he saw a way of repaying. His uncle was a rich man. Nobody does anything for nothing. He didn't do it for nothing. Jay, don't you think we ought to eat? Jay Walter. It's his apartment. I know it's his apartment, but how did we get here? Quickly. Just like that? Let's just give him a few more minutes, honey, okay? okay? Yes, Mr. Gillespie, that's true. I thought you had to die to do this. Can they hear us? Neither hear nor see. Look at that woman. Is she plain or is she plain? She loves your nephew with all her heart. Honestly, sir, I respect your point of view, but... Yes, yes, but... She fixed up this place, I'll give her that. I don't know what on. Not on his salary. Oh, yeah. She's a decorator. She's a very shy lady. She doesn't earn all that much decorating. She's got a good eye. Yes. Mr. Gillespie, we do understand. He's talking to Gillespie. That's Horace Gillespie. He's the head of the left wing of the Musicians' Union. I know. Oh, yes, of course you know. What's he talking to Gillespie for? I fired him. Mr. Gillespie, if you'd only... You can't talk to Gillespie. He's talking to him. It's a waste of time. The man is intransigent. He's a jackass. He hates me. He started this damn strike just to spite me. Oh, I thought he started it because Jay Walter and Karen got married. What are you talking about? The man is trying to break me. He won't sit down at the bargaining table. It's his way or nothing. So he gets nothing. Mr. Gillespie, we're all for that. We make our living from the talents of musicians. We recognize that, sir, but this strike is hurtful to everyone, most of all the people who purchase tickets. All I ask is that we sit down and talk. Forget it. I have confidence in you, Mr. Gillespie. I know the musicians do. Soft soaping won't work with an animal like that. You gotta be tough. I promise you we can work it out. Do we talk tomorrow? Fat chance. Mr. Gillespie, my uncle is a difficult man because he's a smart man, a good businessman. He doesn't hate you. Ten o'clock tomorrow morning? Yes, sir. Thank you, Horace. <laughs> All right. All right. Oh. You know, I don't know why you do what you do for that man. He's a mean old man, and he's never going to come tonight. Oh, I think he will. And I don't think he's really mean. I believe he plays at it. I think he thinks that someone will take advantage of him if he doesn't. Jay, for years he's taken advantage of you. You really go into that bargaining table? Yes. Even after he's fired you? Oh, he didn't mean that. He just wasn't feeling well. <sighs> what kind of thanks do you think you'll get? None whatsoever. I don't expect anything from him. Well, you've certainly never gotten any money from him. I never worked for the money. <sighs> do you think he really cut you out of his will? I don't know. Uh, what the hell? We'll get by. I'm only 30. We've got a lifetime ahead of us. At least we've got each other. All he's got is his concert series. Poor old Uncle Phil. I only wish he thought more of me. No matter how hard I've tried, I've always felt like I was always letting him down. We should have invited him to the wedding. I don't know. He would have just spoiled it for you. You know, I didn't care so much for me, but he always spoiled everything for you. Hey, come on. Let's eat. I have fixed us a great meal. Oh, uh, let's just wait a few more minutes, okay, honey? Come on, I'm sure he'll turn up. Jay. Uh, Uncle Phil's so lonely. I feel guilty being so happy. <laughs> Can we go? Where to, Felodia? You said you had a room for me. Why don't you send me there? All right. I only wish. Yes? A 
wish I hadn't changed the will. If I only had till morning, I'd make a call. A dying wish. What difference does it make a few hours? You could go to the concert, pick me up afterwards. Please, get in. Let me do this thing. Done. I mean it. <laughs> Wonders never cease. I'll try to see that they don't. Thank you. Glad you mentioned it. <laughs> I wish I could tell him. Them? They're holding dinner for you. Oh, God. There's a while until morning. Enough time to tell them. A lot of things. Whatever you wish. Oh, there's another concert in the morning. Would you like to go? Are you kidding? No. What time does it start? The host is always late. They need management. I'll see if I can get you to work. Uncle Phil. Honey, it's Uncle Phil. What a pleasant surprise. What did the doctor say? The doctor said, Philodian K. Acrimonious, the time has come for you to be good to your nephew. To go to his house and meet his lovely bride, break bread, and be for an evening. But you've never been before. A nice guy. Uncle Phil, I've always thought you're a nice guy. <sighs> That's because you're a nice guy. Also, as I remember, you play a terrific French horn. <laughs> <laughs> 